Welcome to 60 Skills. Today we are going to talk about why are spirits such trouble? Well, to quote your ex, it's not me, it's you, is the answer about 90% of the time. Now don't get me wrong, there are entities that are entirely negativistic in nature, and that should not be used for basically anything. John Michael Greer, in his seminal work, Circles of Power, refers to these as shards. You can do your research on that, but essentially they are incongruent pieces of a former reality that somehow managed to survive into this reality. The result of which is, they are as hostile to human existence as the center of a star. There is simply no point in dealing with them, and the people who do deal with them always suffer as a result, even though that suffering may take quite some time. Now, for the majority of the cases when you're dealing with an entity, the issues come in one of two flavors. First, most of these things reflect off of your own internal poles or mirrors. So whatever behaviors you have, whatever knowledge you have, whatever beliefs you have, these things largely reflect off of that, and that is what you get. So if you have not developed your own non-dual light, or you have not bothered to moderate any of the harsher aspects of your own personality through exercises like repeatedly establishing equilibrium, or the black and white mirror exercises, or the releasing exercises, the reflection these entities are going to provide is going to be based off of this unmitigated behavior. This is where a lot of the negative incarnations of an entity come from. Now that is one aspect of this, and this needs to be kept in mind. However, there is also another less often discussed aspect of this that requires some exploration. First, the kind of representation you get from an entity has a lot to do with what level of existence that entity is manifesting on. So, if you are manifesting the non-dual light version of an entity, what you are seeing is the better nature of that entity. So in short, in the 60 skill system, what this refers to is creating or invoking the entity in that ball a hand width above the head. Again, their non-dual light manifestation can provide virtually no services or actions to you in the real world. What it can provide is information and because it is being invoked at the non-dual level, the cost of that information is generally quite low. Now, the further down the chain of manifestation you move, from the Akashic or non-dual level, down into the mental, down into the astral, down into the vital, the more dual the representation of the entity becomes. Once you get to the astral level, which is where most egregores exist, now you are additionally dealing with something that has the ability to affect reality on the near earth level, but is also surrounded by a power source that has been built up over a long period of time. And this power source carries with it various beliefs and systems and ways of dealing with things. This is where in particular the more negativistic aspects of an entity really come upon display. But there's a catch. It's only really at the astral and vital levels that an entity is capable of doing something for you in the event you provide it the proper resources. And the proper resources are usually your own personal energy. We can get into that a different time. So understand, a lot of the issues associated with entities depend upon, one, their true nature, but more importantly, at what level of reality you are bringing these entities into existence. And the closer to the physical reality we get, the more the cultural programming, long-term egregore buildup, etc. comes in. Now, there is one final point that is seemingly strange to me that people can't seem to figure out, but I will mention anyway. The issue of whether or not entities can ultimately lie is open for debate, and nobody has a really good answer to that. What is not open to debate is whatever world these things live in, physically speaking, is vastly different than the world we live in. So just because something is possible for it to do 
in that place does not mean it is possible for those same rules and procedures and techniques to work here. The fact that people cannot seem to grasp the simple concept is quite confusing, but this also needs to be kept in mind. The advice it is giving you may work very well wherever the hell it comes from, but the world it exists in is certainly vastly different than the one that we exist in. So as always, you need to apply your discernment and best judgment and heavily vet any information received from the other side. Thank you for joining me today. I hope to see you again soon and be well.